In this video, we'll explain gambler's fallacy and we'll debate whether it is actually a fallacy or not. So what is gambler's fallacy? Well, in short, gambler's fallacy is the false belief that a random process becomes less random and more predictable as it's repeated. Well, gambler's fallacy arises out of a belief in a law of small numbers, or the erroneous belief that small samples must be representative of a much larger sample of the so-called long run. The gambler's fallacy is also known as the Monte Carlo fallacy, or the fallacy of the maturity of chances. It's the mistaken belief that if something happens more frequently than normal during some period, it will happen less frequently in the future. Or if something happens less frequently than normal during some period, it will happen more frequently in the future, presumably as some sort of balancing or regression to the mean. In situations where what is being observed is truly random, like the independent trials of roulette spins or dice throws, this belief, though appealing to the human mind, is false. This fallacy can arise in many practical situations, but is most strongly associated with gambling, where this erroneous perception and cognitive bias is common among players. Now, this is the generally accepted official, so to speak, view on gambler's fallacy. There are, however, gambling experts who disagree with it. There are people who claim that gambler's fallacy is not actually a fallacy, it is not a cognitive bias, but a reality based on probabilities. Let's see their reasoning. The prevailing wisdom among gaming experts and mathematicians is that every table decision, a games like roulette or craps, is an independent event. The opposing view that a number can be due is derided as being a foolish viewpoint and is referred to as the premise of the gambler's fallacy. As it turns out, this so-called fallacy is in itself false. The following are the incongruencies of this independent events issue that the experts have not addressed. At American Roulette, every number has a 1 in 38 chance of appearing on the next spin. This 1 in 38 chance is that number's statistical expectation. But if an entity has any kind of expectation, it ceases to be independent. If these numerical events did not have an inherent predictability, there would be no way to assign a statistical expectation to them, and anything that has a predictable quality to it cannot be independent. As Frank Barstow said in his book, Beat the Casino, dice and the wheel are inanimate, but if their behavior were not subject to some governing force or principle, sequences of 30 or more repeats might be commonplace, and there could be no games like craps or roulette because there would be no way of figuring probabilities and odds. This, of course, goes against the thinking and teachings of all other gaming authors, but that in itself does not prove that statement to be wrong. This truth becomes more clear when one considers that the independent events premise gaming experts embrace actually contradicts itself. Table results at roulette are in an ongoing state of conforming to their probabilities, but anything that is truly independent does not conform. Many gaming authors contradict themselves as well by advising their readers to hold out for a specific table condition, like the five count of craps. But if all table results were as independent as they claim, it would not make the slightest difference when a player placed his bets. Anything that occurred in the past would have no relevance whatsoever. Gaming authors, statisticians, and math experts agree that the numbers will conform to the probabilities given a large enough sampling. What they're saying is that numbers can form in large groups, but not in small groups. Another contradiction. An accumulation of small groups will form a large group. Therefore, anything that applies to a large group will also apply to a small group in a smaller way. So the statistical pressure for numbers to conform to their probabilities will be felt in all numbers that form any small group, just as they do for a large group. For lack of a better expression, each number is a tiny part of a greater conspiracy that will ultimately reveal itself as the trials accumulate. And it comes down to this. In a controlled environment that invokes a statistical certainty, there has to be a cause and an effect. The effect is that the numbers conform to their statistical expectation. The other guys will tell you that there is no cause, that the effect is a result of willy-nilly random chance that conforms through unabated coincidence. And the entire world has been buying this illogical horse buggy for a hundred years. 
The truth is, these numbers are influenced by the equivalent of a countdown that adjusts itself with every spin, which is programmed into the device itself. The more precise the manufacturing technique of that device, the more accurate or unbiased the table decisions will be. So how did so many experts arrive at such an erroneous conclusion? Their viewpoint rested largely on the seeming incontrovertible argument that the wheel has no memory. Hard to argue with that, because it does sound like the rantings of a madman to claim that the wheel can remember what has happened, then compensate accordingly. That implies that the wheel possesses some form of intelligence. Ah, but what they overlook is the fact that man does possess the technology to create a balanced device that distributes the numbers evenly. And that is all the wheel is doing when it performs this artificial thinking task that they all say is impossible. So the wheel does not actually think, but it is constructed to perform the equivalent task, insofar as the fair distribution of numbers is concerned. It was designed through precision crafting to produce numbers that match the probabilities. The illusion of memory is an inherent part of the construction, so in effect it does have a memory. In effect, it knows when number 5 is underperforming, and given enough time, it will compensate for that. It is self-correcting. This logic applies to anything that has been formally assigned a statistical expectation. So at craps, the dice are precision ground to within one ten thousandth of an inch. The dice don't need to have a memory to act as if they did, they are just doing what they were constructed to do. The numbers that are generated will automatically pursue a state of balance among themselves. What this means is that a craps or roulette number can be technically due after all. Its appearance may be sidetracked by an opposing trend, but that is just a temporary delay of the inevitable. Well then, if these events are not independent, shouldn't gaming systems work? Well, not necessarily. There are two forces at play. Statistical propensity, the law of averages, and trends. At times, these two work in concert with each other, at other times they may clash. But in any such contest, trends have the strategic advantage. Think of statistical propensity as the underlying constant, which will frequently be disrupted by trends, which don't take orders from anyone. If this was useful to you, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like our video. Now, maybe it's time to get your play to the next level with the great strategies you will find in our site, or watch another one of our videos.